Hi, I'm David, and as part of today's small group leadership training, I want to talk about leading online small groups. Today, we're going to dive into one of the platforms you might be using and show you some great tips and tricks on how to have the best small group experience in Zoom. Online small groups are a great tool, and we want to give you the tools to use them well. Before anything else, we want to make sure that you're using these platforms in a way that is both safe and accessible to your small group. Unfortunately, one of our staff members has been a part of an interchurch meeting that was left public, uh, and an individual was able to access the meeting and share some explicit content. And it is a risk when you meet online, and so it's important to make sure that your group is safe. Here's some basic security tips to help you avoid this. Number one, keep your link private. Rather than posting your meeting link somewhere public, send it through a private message or through an email. This prevents people from attempting to access your room off of a public link. Make sure you can get it out to your group members ahead of time so you can make sure everybody has the link. Number two, you can use a password. Like using a private link, a meeting password is just another simple way to protect your group. And just like the meeting link, make sure you're only sharing this password to group members in a private setting. I have seen a number of groups posting meeting links and passwords publicly and still calling their meetings secure. And if somebody has the link and the password, they can find and they can join your meeting. So find a private way like a Facebook group, a text list or an email list to share that contact information with your group. A third way to stay safe is by enabling waiting rooms. Waiting rooms are a great tool for online groups. When enabled, they put all the people into an external room prior to the meeting. You can chat with members, verify their email, and admit group members as you're ready. It also allows you to filter out people that are joining. To use waiting rooms effectively, it's best if all group members use their name or email for the account so you can quickly and easily manage your participants. Zoom is a great video conferencing tool that has a lot of features that make it great for hosting a small group meeting. We're gonna talk about a few key features that will help you as you run a small group meeting in Zoom. I'm gonna be using Zoom on a computer, and as a meeting leader, I'd recommend that over a tablet or a phone for usability. If you're using Zoom on a tablet or phone, the layout of certain functions may be a little different, so keep that in mind when you go into Zoom. One limitation of Zoom is that you can only meet for 40 minutes if you have a free account. The church has access to multiple Zoom Pro accounts, so connect with Dave or I to get access to one of those. If someone in your group has a Zoom Pro account through work or for personal use, feel free to use that too. Now. Let's dive into Zoom and look at some in-program tools that'll help you. Under the Participants tab, you'll be able to see if anyone is in a waiting room. If you've enabled this as a security measure, you'll have to go here to allow people to enter the meeting. Once people are in your meeting, you'll wanna make sure that you can see them. In the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you'll find viewing modes. Speaker view will highlight whoever is talking and is great if somebody is sharing or leading a part of a meeting. In a small group discussion context, I find that gallery mode works best as it allows you to see everybody all at once. The majority of the functions you'll need to use are on the bottom bar of Zoom. Share screen lets you display your screen or part of your screen with your group. This is great to put up slides in a presentation. And if you're gonna be sharing a video series with a group, you'll wanna make sure you click both optimize for video, which will help with some buffering, and share computer audio so that sound is sent to your group members. Breakout rooms is another great feature. If you have a larger small group, you may wanna use the breakout rooms feature to send people into smaller groups. Breakout rooms allow you to automatically or manually sort your meeting participants and send them into separate rooms for times of discussion and prayer. This works great to split a larger small group to break out into smaller groups for prayer and things like that. One last feature to know about is the chat. The chat box allows you to send public messages to the group or private messages to individual participants. This can be great for sharing a resource or link with the whole group and the private chat can be a great for queuing an apprentice leader or somebody to take over if they're leading a portion of the meeting. Each of these features can be used in a variety of ways to enhance the experience of your small group. Remember, we're here to serve so you can succeed. If you have any questions about leading an online small group or need help getting your online small group up and running, feel free to reach out and contact us. Also, check out the downloadable write-up of this video in the description below. I hope this helps you as you continue your journey into online small groups. If you found this video valuable, we'd love if you would throw us a like, share, and subscribe. If you have a question or would like us to cover other areas of small group leadership, leave a comment down below and I'd love to chat with you there. Also, you can check out this playlist of other small group leader training videos to continue learning about how to lead groups both in person and online.